Are we there? Yes. Um, good morning, Mr. Buffett, Mr. Munger. My name is Patrick Brown from Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and uh, I've watched uh, returns on equity for the banking sector in the U.S. go up uh, a good bit over the last few years, and the returns on tangible equity for, for some of the major banks that have led the consolidation have gone up a good bit more. Uh, leads me to wonder whether these returns are sustainable over either the, the near term or the, the longer term, five, ten years out. Well, that's a, that. That's the $64 question, because the returns on equity, and, and particularly tangible equity, as the gentleman mentioned, and, and particularly tangible equity in the banking sector even, those returns have hit numbers that, that uh, are unprecedented. And then the question is, if they're unprecedented, are they unsustainable? Uh, we, we, Charlie and I would probably think the, the we, we would certainly prefer uh, we would not we would not base our actions on the premise that they are sustainable. Uh, uh, Twenty percent plus returns on tangible equity or on on book equity, and much higher returns on on tangible equity. In the banking field, you have a number of enterprises that on tangible equity are are, are getting up close to the thirty percent range. Now, can a can a system the GDP in real terms is growing maybe 3%, where in nominal terms it grows 4 to 5%. Can businesses consistently earn 20% on equity? They certainly can't if they retain most of their earnings, because you would have corporate profits rising as a percentage of GDP to, to the point uh, uh, that would get ludicrous. So under those conditions, you'd either have to have huge payouts either by repurchases of shares or by dividends or, uh, or by takeovers, actually, that, that would keep the level of capital reasonably consistent among industry, or because you couldn't sustain, let's just say every company retained all of its earnings and they earned 20% on equity, you could not have corporate profits growing at 20% as a part of the economy year after year. Uh, this has been a better world than we foresaw in terms of returns, and uh, so we've been wrong before, and we're not making a prediction now, but we, we would not want to buy things on the basis that this, these returns would be sustained. We, we told you last year if these returns are sustained and, and interest rates stayed at these levels or fell lower, that stock prices are in aggregate are justified, and we still believe that. But those are two big ifs, and the particularly big if, in my view, is the one about about returns on, on, on uh, equity uh, and on tangible assets. Uh, it goes against, certainly goes against classic economic theory to believe that they can be sustained. Charlie, how do you feel about it? Well, I think a lot of the increase in return on equity has been caused by the increasing popularity of Jack Welch's idea that you can't be a leader in a line of business, get out of it. and. Uh, as you get fewer people in the business, why well, returns on equity can go up. Then it's gotten way more popular to buy in shares, even at uh, very high prices per share. And if you keep the equity low enough by buying shares back, why well, you can make return on equity whatever you want. Uh, we've had, a, to some extent, a, a slow revolution in, in corporate attitudes. And uh, But Warren is right. You can't. You can't have massive accumulations of, of, of earnings that are retained and, uh, and keep earning these rates of return on them. An interesting question is to think about it. If you had 500 Jack Welches and they were running the Fortune, eight, they're cloned and they were running all of the Fortune 500 companies, would returns on equity for American business be higher or lower than they are presently? I mean, if, if you have 500 sensational competitors, uh, they can all be rational, but that doesn't, and, and they will be, and they'll be smart, and they'll keep trying to do all the right things. But there's a self-neutralizing effect. It's like having 500 expert chess players or 500 expert bridge players. So you still have a lot of losers uh, if they get together and play in a tournament. So it's not at all clear that if all American management were dramatically better, leaving out the competition against foreign enterprises that, that returns on equity would be a lot better. They might very well drive things down. That's what, to some extent, can easily happen in securities markets. 
it's way better to be in securities markets if, if you have 100 IQ and everybody else operating has an 80 than if you have 140 and all the rest of them also have 140. So it's, uh, the secret of life is weak competition. <laughs> Somebody said, how do you beat Bobby Fischer, you know, and you, you, said, you play him any game except chess. Well, <laughs> that's how you beat Jack Welch, you play him any game except business. Well, he's a very good golfer, I want to <laughs> point out. He, would, he, he shot a 69 one, a few months ago, and I saw him at, at a very tough course. So Jack manages to play 70 or 80 rounds of golf a year, and and come in subpar occasionally while still doing what he does at GE. He's a great manager. But 500 Jack Welches, I'm not at all sure, would make stocks more valuable in, in this country.